About two years ago, I made a video called The Cheapest Motion Capture in the World, and it was just kind of an exploration of what was available to do motion capture on the cheap. Uh, the world's changed a little bit in the last two years, and there's some things have become more expensive, and some things have really improved on the lower end. So I wanted to, to do a little bit of an exploration of uh, what I've learned in the last while, what I'm using now, and what's helped me in my performances and, and uh, on the technical side of things. I'm very, very lucky in that I'm going to Sheridan College's virtual production program at the moment in the motion capture track. So I've been given access essentially to a quarter to half a million dollars worth of motion capture equipment there. And it is amazing to be able to have that. Uh, Here's an example of a, a clip uh, using the OptiTrack system where I was walking and I tripped and fell and it doesn't lose me at any point even though I was lying on the ground and uh, the cameras really shouldn't have been able to see the markers on my legs but uh, it, it was able to, to create my skeleton properly and animate it well and it's really amazing but the cost of these things is incredible. The Sheridan volume has about 40 OptiTrack cameras and each of those cameras starts at I think about 6,000 US. So that's a lot of money. Uh, I know there is one YouTuber who's using a Vicon system in their basement so I don't know exactly what uh, what that man does to get money but uh, I, uh, I'm not getting a Vicon system in my little uh, office here anytime soon. Space is definitely the biggest challenge for doing that kind of outside-in system. Uh, another example of the outside-in on the cheap is the IPI soft software, which I talked about in that previous video. And that uh, uses either depth cameras or uh, action cameras to kind of build a volume that way. We still need a fairly decent amount of space to be able to set up multiple cameras to be able to capture your, your motion. Uh, when I moved to this apartment that I'm in now, I no longer had like a 10 by 10 space that I could just set up a couple of cameras in and it became very frustrating because I had just spent I think 650 US on that software and essentially I was able to, to do a couple of tests with it but nothing really substantial because I would have to set the cameras up, calibrate them, do some motion capture for a while and then they just tear them down because it wasn't like a permanent space that I could use. As much as I love the IPI soft software. It's very good at what it does, and I hope to use it again soon, but at the moment, I just don't have the space for it. That brings us to motion capture suits, and you've probably seen a lot of YouTubers who have motion capture suits, uh, but they've gotten more expensive in the last two years. Perception Neuron used to have an entry-level system at about 1500 US, and now that they've released their version 3, it's up to about $4,000 uh, at, at the starting level. And Rococo is about $4,000 for a full solution, I think $3,500 for the starting. Xsense starts at $3,500 US, and that doesn't include hands or face. So, I mean, I would love to be able to drop $4,000 on a motion capture suit. I hope to in the next year or two, but it's not like a thing that you just go and buy. It's, it, it's an investment. So what's more affordable than that? Uh, and I think it's these AI-powered systems in which you send them a video and the AI processes that video, turns it into motion capture data, and sends it back. Now, in that video from two years ago, I talked a little bit about Radical, which I had been testing at the time, and I wasn't really sure that it was going to work, mainly because it didn't have foot locking at, the, at that point. So there's a couple of these different uh, AI-powered systems. There's Deep Motion, which has been around for a while. Plask is a free one, which I have not used, but uh, some people seem to be having some success with. And there's one called move.ai, which is very promising. It looks like you set up multiple cameras, you can capture multiple people, but uh, they have no word on pricing or availability yet. So it's kind of like, it's, it's great that it's, it's being worked on, but uh, it's not available. Uh, so I've been using Radical, and Radical has been great because they solved that footlocking problem. It's not 100%. But they now have a little button that says footlock, and when you turn that on, it actually uh, keeps your feet in place when you're moving around. So what that does is give you the ability to use it for kind of wide shots. Uh, here's an example I did of uh, I needed to have this character limping away from this monster. So I just set up a, an iPhone in the parking lot of my building and just limped across the parking lot. And I was able to turn that data into something usable for the shot. It, it's, uh, it's fantastic. The good thing about Radical is that it's very affordable. For one month, it's $24 to get three minutes of footage. 
and that's kind of expensive uh, makes it about eight bucks per minute of animation but if you're to sign up annually it's like 90 bucks US I think for three minutes per month so 90 bucks to get uh, 36 minutes of animation is not not bad at all and uh, you could always do pay as you go to add on to that or there's bigger plans that go up to like 120 minutes a month now as great as radicals foot locking is it does have the issue that it doesn't really record your hands or your fingers so you need some kind of solution to do that in the last couple of months i did two short films using these very simple characters from uh, synthy studios it was great for what i wanted to do so i was uh, shooting this stuff in my living room and I was able to send it to Radical, turn that motion into uh, FBX files, and just apply that inside Unreal and, and make a short film out of it. The benefit of it was that I wasn't doing any facial capture because Sinti's characters don't really have any animated faces, and I wasn't really animating their hands. So there are some parts you'll notice that the rigging isn't great on the hands and something's going on there, but for what I was doing just to kind of learn my way around Unreal, it was very, very helpful. The other downside to Radical is that it is not live. You have to record your motion, upload the footage, wait for it to be processed, and then download it and apply it. Radical does have a beta going on right now of uh, live motion capture. Not exactly sure how that works, but uh, it's something I hope to be able to explore in the future because I think it would be great to be able to just turn on Unreal and stream data straight into it and get a performance done. But what if you wanted to do facial motion capture? Well. You've got some options, but if you want to use a motion capture helmet, there's not a lot of affordable uh, solutions. It's, it's all really insanely expensive. I think the cheapest helmet is from Perception Neuron, and it's about 650 US. Uh, generally, they start at like $1,000, $1,100 for a motion capture helmet. So I was looking at this and trying to figure out, like, what was I going to do to do facial motion capture? And the only option was really to build my own helmet, which is not a perfect solution, but it works. So let me get that. All right, so this is the helmet that I built. Uh, part of it was based on, there's a guy I think uh, from Xanadu Studios, maybe it's what it's called. He, he made these baby animations, now he's doing like a blue guy animation. I saw a picture of his helmet and I built this to be fairly similar to his. It cost me, I'm going to say, about $130, but I think it could be done for cheaper now. Uh, so the base of this is just an airsoft helmet that has a mount for a head-mounted display or, or kind of like uh, night vision goggles. And I've added this kind of GoPro arm that ends on a phone mount. So now I can just mount the iPhone here. And I've also got this, uh, this is just like a, a mesh. I think this was about 20 bucks to put here. And what I've done in that is I put some little sandbags inside here. These sandbags came from a, a wrist weight set. So I think that wrist weight set was probably 15, 20 bucks to get, I think, six or seven weights. I'm using only two or three of them in here at the moment. But uh, that, that gives me the option to use the rest of them on a second helmet. So yeah, the, the whole thing for this helmet cost about, I'm going to say $120, $130. Uh, and it's not perfect. But the balance is fairly good, and what it does is it puts a camera right in front of my face, and I'm able to, to perform and have everything recorded. So let me talk about my general setup when I'm performing. I have one camera in my office just set up over here, and I set the camera to as wide as it can go, like an ultra-wide lens, and that's got to capture all the way from my feet to the top of my head in whatever I'm doing. And I've also got this camera running. So I'm recording on both of them. And what this allows me to do is just to perform without worrying about any software stuff happening. In the past, I've tried different setups. And generally, I would have to do a take, run back to the computer, hit spacebar to stop. And it was really just affecting my ability to perform as like an actor. Uh, once you sort of have a way to be able to do multiple takes in a row without worrying about any technical things... It lets you go back, look at what your best takes are, and then use whatever performance you prefer. At the moment, I've been using a, a lavalier uh, with this, so a wireless lavalier setup. I'm using the Blink Ceremonic, and that's been great, but it is a little pricey. I think it's about 200 bucks for the, the setup I have. But if I didn't have that, I would get one of those lightning microphones that uh, has a direct plug into the iPhone. 
and since the iPhone's here anyway and I'm already recording video, might as well record the audio at the same time. Downsides of this setup is, as you can see, it's fairly loose. I often wear like either a toque or a backwards baseball cap under this to just kind of brace it against my head because you don't really want this moving around a lot. Uh, it also squeaks because there's some cheap styrofoam in here. So if you can find something with uh, a different inside, that might work a little better for you. This is not bad though. I've, I've never had a take ruined yet because of the squeaking and the styrofoam. To process, clean up my animation and add any hand and facial animation, I've been using iClone as, as my software. Now, it is another expense. It's about 500 bucks US uh, to get the software. But it's got a lot of great tools that you don't really have in Unreal. Unreal lets you bring the motion capture data in and you can animate in there, but I don't find the tools as, as intuitive as they are in iClone. So this is just the, the method that's working for me. It also has the added benefit that if you get character creator with iClone, then you have uh, the ability to make all the characters that you want. So once I have the body and face video recorded, I take the body video and I upload it to Radical and wait for the AI to process that. Usually takes 10 minutes. Uh, it's taken as long as 10 hours, but that was, I think, a fluke case. Generally, it's like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, the facial animation is a bit of a problem. So the way the Live Face app works in iClone is that you're supposed to have your iPhone on with the app running and it connects directly into the uh, iClone software on your computer and it transfers your facial data into the character immediately. What I've found with that is that if you're relying on Wi-Fi to send the data from your iPhone to the computer, there's dropouts at random times and you won't know that until you go back and review everything so it's, it's kind of a pain to do that, and I'd rather just be able to perform a bunch of different takes and then go back and review the footage. So if you don't want to have to worry about dropouts, you can have an Ethernet cable plugged into your iPhone, but then that means you've got a wire connected to you as you're performing. It's not really that great uh, to have a, a wire dangling off your face while you're performing. When I first started playing with Live Face inside iClone, I would sit at my desk with the iPhone on a mount in front of me, I would perform the dialogue and any facial animation, and then I would get up and go do the body motion. What I found from that was that I could never quite get my body motion to match what I was saying or how I was performing. Uh, it, it would look okay, but sometimes I would also have like double motion or sort of... Um, competing motion on my face because I would be in the facial performance turning my head this way or tilting it this way and then my body would be doing something else at the same time and it would kind of either erase it or cause like weird glitchiness so to be able to just perform my face and my body at the same time was absolutely invaluable so the system I set up is that I record my face on the phone I transfer that video to my computer and then just set the iPhone up to to look at the screen and so live face sees the video of me performing and translate that into facial captures and so that works pretty well you just have to remember to mirror your video or your eyes are kind of looking the wrong way so once i get my fbx files back from radical i'm taking that and uh, putting it into iclone then i'm processing my face stuff adding it to the character as well but now i have to deal with the hands so at the moment i'm doing my hand animation uh, manually I'll look at the reference video that I uploaded to Center Radical, and then I'll uh, sort of copy the, the poses and, and the wrist motions inside iClone and add that to the character. It's not an ideal way of working, obviously. You're doing motion capture and everything else, and why are the hands such a problem? I do have a leap motion, and so far I haven't found a good way to implement it. So I'm still looking for hand solutions, because that would be great to be able to just do the entire performance at one time. But uh, to spend like an extra hour or two on a, on a 30 second clip just doing the hand animations, it's not the worst thing. I've already saved a ton of time by not animating it, by just being able to do motion capture. So that's, that's great. So that's everything I've figured out in the last while. Uh, I hope this helps you in some ways. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments. I'd love to, to hear if anybody's got a better way of doing some of this stuff. Utopia. <laughs> You can tell me that there's a world full of lizard people all hatched from the same mama, and I might believe you. 
You could tell me there's a world with 30 foot tall rock monsters whose primary form of communication is dancing. I'll believe you. But you tell me that there's a world where everybody gets along and nobody has any problems? Well, you might call that a utopia. I call that a cult.